Welcome, this is Jennifer McGuire. I'm so glad you're here. Now today's video is a little bit different for me. I will be creating three cards with each with a different technique, but they all have the same overall design. I will create all three at once just to show you some different things you can do with the products that I'm using. All three cards also use the same products. So we're gonna get three different looks and three different techniques. Now I think it's best to just look at the completed cards first, just to show you that large flower on the front is the front of the card. So it opens up so you can see the personal message on the inside. All three have that overall design, but each is done a bit differently. Now the stamp set that I'm using today is beautiful. It's from Alex Siberia. It's the festive poinsettia stamp set. It's a six by eight stamp set with that large, beautiful image. There are coordinating dies and coordinating layering stencils available to go with it. I will be using these together and separately today. I think it's fun to see the different looks you can get when you use them separately too. Now for one of my cards, I am going to do a fun technique of using Tim Holtz Distress Embossing Glaze. Now embossing glaze is a translucent embossing powder. That means you can see through it. So it's like a tinted embossing powder, but if you have color behind it, that will also show through. This makes it great for techniques. Now these are the newest colors of his Tim Holtz embossing glaze. And I have done a complete video on how to use these and many techniques for using with them. And I will link to that up here in the top right at the end of this video and in my description below. Today I'm just doing one technique using a few of these new colors. If you do not have any embossing glaze, don't worry, I will talk about other products you can use to get similar results. Let's get started with the three cards. Notice that only one of the cards has this stamped outline, that card in the center. Let's go ahead and start with that stamping. I have my Misty stamping tool, and instead of the mouse pad, I like to use my Waffle Flower Grip Mat. It's like a giant clear stamp, so it has this natural tackiness that will hold your paper still. I'll talk more about that mat later. I also have a piece of white cardstock I've placed inside and the large image. I will stamp this with Gina K Obsidian Black Amalgam Ink. The reason I chose this ink is that you can really use pretty much any coloring medium you want with it. It will stay nice and crisp, and it's one that I reach for often. I will then use the coordinating die to cut out this flower, and I will cut two more white die cuts without the outline stamped. So I have all three of these flowers, and we're going to ink them up all at the same time. So we'll do one stencil on all of them, then the next stencil on all of them, and it'll just kind of show you how you can create more than one piece at once, which allows you to really get more out of your crafty time. Since I'm creating three large flowers at once, I'm going to use three different sticky mats to hold it down as I use the stencils. You'll see it's very helpful. And I thought this was a good opportunity to show you that all three work great for this. Now the first one that I'll be using is the Waffle Flower 6.5 by 8.5 inch grip mat. Now this is like a large clear stamp, a large flat clear stamp. And I have stuck to the back of it a see-through green grid mat. It'll still stick to my work surface, my glass work surface, because the edges are exposed. And this will help me to grip my die cut and stencil in place as I ink. This is the mat you just saw me use in my Misty stamping tool. Now the second mat I'll be using is from Altenew. It's the Ultra Sticky Mat. Now this actually is also a large stamp. It's made of the same material, but the backside has a grid engraved into it, which you can kind of see through. It is only comes in that square size, whereas the Waffle Flower comes in a bunch of different sizes, but they both work very similar for holding your paper down and your stencil down as you do your inking. So I'll demonstrate with both of those. And then I have a third mat. This is the stamp and stencil mat from Brutus Monroe and Simon Says Stamp. It's a more traditional sticky mat. And this one works different than the others, which you'll see and I'll talk about. And I do have a video coming soon where I do a comparison of all the different sticky mats and how they are all good for different things. So there on the grip mat, I am placing my outline stamped image. And then on the other two, I'll place the solid die cuts. And now we can start creating. Now I could use the same mat for each of these, right? Or you could use tape to tape things down. It really doesn't matter. I just thought it'd be easier to switch between all of these if I had the three different mats and you could see them all in action. 
So let's start with the first one. This is the Waffle Flower Grip Mat, and I am pressing that onto my glasswork surface. This will grip very tightly onto something super smooth, like a stencil or a glass mat. So this is stuck to my glass mat, and I'll put a stencil over this die cut and watch how the stencil suctions onto it. You can see the change in kind of the color there on the screen on the outside edges. That means it's stuck there and it is not going to move when I apply ink over it. So really grip mats are helpful in keeping things from sliding, but you can still peel things off of it. All right, now for the ink, I'm using Altenew Fresh Dye Ink. This is the olive color. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. It's, I think the story is um, the owner's daughter pronounced olive that way, or no, Olaf from Frozen. So anyways, it is supposed to be olive, and I'm applying that ink with a large blending brush from Altenew. I use a large blending brush when I have large areas to cover. It really saves time. And I'm applying this ink over the first stencil. You can see how that stencil is suctioned down onto that grip mat and will not move. I don't need to hold anything here. Now at this point, I decided that wasn't really the color I wanted. I wanted a darker, more Kelly green. So I'm switching to my favorite green ink, which is Let Us Celebrate. It's another fresh dye ink, but this is from the Amy Tangerine line. And I'm applying this over that kind of light-handed, but heavier towards the inside edges of those leaves. You definitely could do this faster if you just chose one ink color. All right, so now I can just peel off that stencil and you can see that it really held in place and I have beautiful inked results there. Okay, now let's move on to one of the blank white die cuts. So this one, we're not using the outline. We're just building the image with the stencils and it gives a different look. So I'm just lining this up based on the peaks of those die cuts and I'm pressing this down. Now with this type of sticky mat, it really holds onto the paper quite well and it holds on to the stencil, but not as well as the grip mat. So I usually kind of keep my hand on it. Also, because there's no sticky on the back side of this mat, it will move around on your work surface. However, that may be a plus because you can kind of spin it to better um, reach ink to the different areas that you want. And you'll see that as we go. So really, all of these surfaces work. If you don't have any of them, what you can do is just tape it down. You could start with the stenciling first, then use the coordinating die. So you can more easily tape the stencils to the paper. But I prefer this way for sure. All right, so I applied both those ink colors here. I like the color that we get. And it's time to move on to the third option. But I want to clean the stencil off, so I did a quick spray with some rubbing alcohol. And then I have a dried up baby wipe. Instead of throwing it away after I used it, I keep it to wipe off that rubbing alcohol. I'll place my blank die cut onto my Altenew grid mat. Remember, this has the same kind of gripping surface. It's made of the same material as that waffle flower one. So you'll see the stencil kind of suctions onto it there and won't move as you're inking. Now this time I want to heat emboss. So I'm gonna remove that stencil because I forgot to use anti-static powder tool. So I'll use that over my die cut first place the stencil back on, and instead of using a colored ink, I am using Versamark ink. You could use a colored ink, you'll see me do that later, but I just want to use clear ink, and that is Versamark. It's a clear, sticky ink. The blending tool that I like to use with Versamark is a Tim Holtz ink blending tool. It has a foam tip, and that way I can really get into the nooks and crannies of the openings of the stencil with this kind of sticky ink. So I just kind of press and twist over the openings. You won't be able to see the ink because it's clear, but when we add embossing powder in a moment, you'll definitely see it. Now it's time to use that Tim Holtz Distress Embossing Glaze. Remember, this is a translucent or see-through embossing powder. I think of it as a tinted embossing powder. So I'm using the crushed olive color and applying it over all the areas that I have used that Versamark ink. So this is just the leaves. Before we ink the leaves this time, we're heat embossing them. So now I'm going to heat set this and you'll see you get this kind of light olive color. If you want that to be darker, you can do a second layer. But I changed my mind. I decided I didn't want this olive color. Instead, I wanted more of a Kelly green, kind of like I did last time. So I let it cool, use my anti-static powder again, and now I'm relining up that stamp and applying another layer of Versamark ink right over the embossing we just did. If you wanted that same olive color but darker, like less see-through, then you could use another layer of the crushed olive. But I'm going to switch this time. 
This time I'll use another one of my favorite green colors, which is mowed lawn. Now, because this is also slightly see-through, it's translucent, some of that crushed olive color will still show through. So you'll end up with a new color that isn't mowed lawn, it isn't crushed olive, but somewhere between. And I think that's something fun about these embossing glazes is you can create whatever color you want by layering them. And when you do additional layers of embossing, you get even smoother results. We're gonna build up those embossing layers. And before you know it, this will look like an enamel accent. It's just beautiful. So stick with me. All right, let's go back to our first die cut. Now we'll use stencil number two on all three of these die cuts. This is very easy to line up. This is one of the advantages of die cutting first. It makes it easier to line up your stencil because you can follow that overall shape. So I press this onto my waffle flower grip mat and you can see that stencil is holding nicely. And this time I will apply a more generous amount of that let us celebrate color. Again, I'm using that big blending brush because I am using the same color over the whole stencil. So it takes a lot less time. Now I thought I'd add a little more depth towards the inside edges of those leaves. So I'm grabbing a darker evergreen color and a smaller blending brush. This is the mini Altenew blending brush, and I'm just applying that color towards the inside of those leaves. Now you'll notice I like to knock off the excess ink from my brush on the inside of my lid before I bring it to my project to prevent any kind of harsh lines. All right, so now I can peel off the stencil and look how beautiful those leaves are already. This does have an opening for the center of the flower, but I plan to put gems there, so I'm just skipping that. Gorgeous results already. All right, now let's switch to our second die cut. This one has no outline to it, and it's on our sticky mat. So I'm lining up this stencil, and I will do the same inking as I did with the last example. Now remember, with this sticky mat, our die cut will hold nicely to it. Our paper will hold nicely, but the stencil may wanna move a little bit, especially if you've used the mat a lot. I have used this mat a lot. It just needs a bath. If I give it a gentle bath or use the cleaner that Brutus Monroe sells, it will be back to new again. But I haven't done that yet. All right, so I did that inking. I'll clean it, uh, the stencil with some rubbing alcohol. Move to my Altenew grip mat, and I have our uh, embossing glaze piece that we've started. I use my anti-static powder tool. I'll press the stencil down. And once again, we will use Versamark ink. And this Versamark ink is going on top of the embossing we've already done. That's okay, we're building up layers of this embossing powder. And because it's translucent, it'll be subtle layers. If you want more drastic differences between the layers, you could definitely use an opaque or non-see-through embossing powder, a traditional embossing powder. But in that case, you would also need to uh, have a lot of different colors of green. In this case, I'm just using the mowed lawn again. So I'm putting just a layer of mowed lawn on top of the two layers we've already done. And another cool thing about building these layers of embossing is that they kind of smooth into each other. When you heat up this layer, it reheats what you've already done and makes them blend. So you don't have a harsh layering look, but rather a soft blend, which you'll see more of as we go. It's gorgeous. So what we just added is a slightly darker green because we put another layer of that translucent powder on top. All right, let's go on to stencil number three. So I'm going back to our first one that has the outline and we'll line up that third stencil. This one does the base layer for our big flower petals. Now I'm using a mix of different reddish color inks, but you could do this flower really in any color you want. I think it'd be really cool to do like blues and teals but I decided to go with a more traditional color scheme. So I'm using a cherry sweet color from Altenew. I put that down kind of light handed and then heavier handed right around the inside at the base of those petals. All right, now we will switch to our second die cut that's on the sticky mat and we'll do the exact same thing. And by the way, when you want to remove a die cut from a sticky mat, you just kind of turn back the sticky mat as you see here and it'll just make your paper pop off. By the way, you may see there on the white part of the die cut that I got some red ink. I just made a mistake, that's okay. If I were gonna leave that center part white, I would use a paper sander like I'm putting in the screen here and kind of uh, just rub away that excess ink. But since I'm gonna be inking that up with red here in a moment, I'll just leave it as is, no big deal. 
All right, we'll clean the stencil and move on to our embossing powder piece. I've used my anti-static powder tool and placing the stencil on top. And over these openings, I'm once again using Versamark ink. If you want the color to be darker, you could do a colored ink here instead. Again, I'll demonstrate that in a moment. But I wanted to show you the true color of this abandoned coral. I think this is such a beautiful color. Now this is kind of see-through. So the white is showing through, the white cardstock behind it, making it a little bit lighter. If you want that darker, do a darker color ink instead of clear underneath. But what I decided to do was double this up and that will also be another way to make this color a bit darker. So when you have two layers of a tinted color, it just becomes that color but darker. So I let it cool, use my anti-static powder tool, line up the stencil again, use the Versamark ink right on top of the Versamark, or um, right on top of the embossing we've already done, and then add more of the embossing glaze. So you can do this with regular embossing powder too. So a non-translucent powder, like a opaque powder, one you can't see through. But when you do that, if you do additional layers of one color, it stays that color. It doesn't get darker and you can't layer two different colors together without it just being whatever color is on top. So that's one of the fun things about the embossing glaze is you can build it up and decide how dark you want it to be. You can let a different color show behind it or put two embossing glazes on top of each other to create a new color. Again, be sure to check out that video where I did a lot of ways to use these powders. But here I have two layers of the abandoned coral and I think that is just gorgeous. All right, now it's time for stencil number four. This adds the details to those red petals. This time I'm using a slightly darker red. This is the crimson. And then I will come in with velvet, which is even darker, and put that towards the inside edge of the petals. Now, a few th tips I wanted to give you about creating like this. Don't spend a lot of time applying your ink. It will blend, these inks, dye inks, will kind of smooth on their own and blend. And when you're layering, it doesn't matter if some areas are splotchy. So don't feel like you have to get that perfect amount of color, the perfect blend. Totally don't need to. You can see I'm just putting this color down very quickly. Now, also, you'll start to see how I'm getting a different look between the outline image, which I've already done, and look at this one without the outline. Absolutely beautiful. Another good reminder is that if you peel off your stencil and you decide that you don't have enough ink down, just put in a little bit more, line the stencil up and put more. If you want it to be softer, try putting a little white pigment ink on top. Okay, let's go back to our embossing glaze piece. I use my anti-static powder tool. I always like to use that anytime I heat emboss. Line up this layering stencil. I will again do Versamark ink right on top of the embossing that we've already done. And I will add another layer of the abandoned coral. So this means there are three layers of embossing powder um, in these little areas here where we just added the Versamark ink. And what happens is when you have a lot of layers of embossing powder, they kind of blend into each other a little bit. So it softens the harsh edges and it really makes these layering stencils look even more beautiful. So it's subtle in the camera, a little more uh, noticeable in real life, and you have that texture and shine. It's just gorgeous. It looks like the side of a vase. Uh, my dad used to collect Rookwood pottery when I was a kid. And the side of those vases just had that beautiful shine to it, and that's what this reminds me of. We're in the home stretch, but I have another idea to share with you, so stick with me. Back to the first die cut that has the outlines. Over this uh, stencil, I applied the coral red color, which is a beautiful color, one of my favorites. And I will line it up with the second die cut here. Again, just putting down color quickly. You can try to do it heavier in the center if you want to, but it really doesn't matter. Now for our glaze panel, I'm gonna do something different this time. I'm gonna put down a little bit of red ink first. Put down a little bit of red ink. So we're starting with that kind of peach color and not starting with white. That means when we put our embossing glaze on top, it'll just get darker. So I put that down, you can't see much yet, but I'm gonna clean that stencil off, line it back up, and put Versamark ink on top of that color. The reason I'm putting Versamark ink on top is this is stickier ink, so it'll hold that embossing powder better. So we have red ink, a little red ink, underneath the clear ink, we'll add this tinted embossing powder on top, and notice we get a slightly darker red color. All right, so I'm going to leave that as is, and we will come back to it after we do our other two die cuts. And this is the final stencil in the bunch. 
On this one, I am applying that coral red color, but heavier. You can also do a little bit of the cherry sweet at the center if you want to, just to make it a bit darker. All right, I'll do the exact same thing on the one without the outline. And I love both of these versions, with and without the outline. And that's why I appreciate that companies offer uh, where products can be used together or separately. It really allows us to get more from our products and also lets you to pick or choose what you prefer. If you like to do coloring, just get the outline and then color it in however you want. If you don't like to color, just get the stencils and you can skip the outline altogether or you can use them as a little combo. All right, now we're on to our glaze piece. This time I'm putting down Cherry Sweet on top of the embossing we've already done. It'll be slick, it won't want to dry here, but that's okay, we're gonna heat set it. So I'm just putting the Cherry Sweet, this red, on top of the embossing we've already done. You'll barely be able to see it there. That's okay, it's gonna stay wet on top of that embossing. So I can go ahead and add some more embossing glaze. You could switch to a different color. I wanted to use only abandoned coral here to show you how you can build up the colors. So I added that powder and we'll heat set it and you'll see that that layered image is a bit darker. And now we have all of these layers on this piece. And because we did so many layers of embossing, they smooth into each other, giving beautiful layering results. It's different than if you just inked it and used like one layer of clear embossing powder. Look at that texture. It just is, it's beautiful in real life. I really wish you could see it. And again, we'll add a center to that flower a little bit later on. So now we have our three die cuts. So we're going to create a fun flap card with these three die cuts. Each one will have the same design, but I will change up the background and sentiment a bit. And this flower, I just think this flower is beautiful and each one is beautiful in its own way. I'd love to hear which one you like the best in the comments below. I think I'm leaning towards the one without the outline, uh, but I'm not sure. Now let's start creating our three different backgrounds. The first one I'm using this Elegant Stripes Hot Foil Plate. I really like this because it has very thin stripes to it. So I have my Spellbinders Glimmer Foil Machine and I am creating a hinge with my hot foil plate on some smooth white cardstock. I'll flip up the plate and underneath it slide some beautiful Aura foil from Spellbinders. This is the one I use the most. It's like an iridescent gold and it foils beautifully. You wanna make sure the pretty side of the foil touches the pretty side of the plate. You flip that all over and put it on your warmed up glimmer machine. Put the two plates on top of it that come with the machine and press the timer button. When the timer button stops flashing, you'll take all of those plates out and run it through your Spellbinders Platinum die cut machine the glimmer machine applies the heat, the die cut machine applies the pressure, and you get a beautiful foil result. I like that this plate does thin lines of gold so it's subtle, great for the card that we're doing. But remember, you can keep the negative space of the foil and use it with the solid hot foil plate. I've demonstrated that in videos before and I'll link to a video up here on the top right. So I do save that leftover foil. For my second background, I use the Sparkling Flakes cover die. This just cuts the outside edge and then all of that detail there in the center. I love these type of backgrounds. I use them a lot. Anything that has a piercing detail is a fun alternative to just plain white background. Now you can use that as a die, and that's what I did here, but you can also use background dies to uh, do foiling. And I thought I would demonstrate that for our third background. So I'm taking that die, taping it onto my smooth white cardstock as we did with the foil plate before. I'm taking the same foil, sliding it underneath, and then I will flip that over and put it on our glimmer machine. So yes, you can hot foil with dies. You will get a very thin line of foil, which is really cool. Um, it just foils wherever you have a cutting edge, and it works great. So I'll do the same exact process. You may need a shim. It depends on your glimmer machine and your die cut machine, like a cardstock shim. I didn't need that. I just did the regular process, run it through my die cut machine, and now we have foiling in that pattern. So this is a great way to get more than one use from your background die, especially background dies that have this kind of piercing look to it. I wish you could see how this twinkles in the lights. It's hard to catch in the video. And here's a comparison. There it is on the left used as a die and on the right used as a foil plate. 
So now we have our three backgrounds, it's time to put together our card. And I thought it'd be fun if the front flap of the card was this large floral image. So I created another die cut using the same die, just from white cardstock. And I'm placing it onto one of the backgrounds we just made. And I'm making sure that a couple of the petals hang off the left edge. I'll tape that onto there so that it doesn't shift. We're gonna to wanna to do a score line on those petals right at the edge of our card panel. So I'm taking this and flipping it over and putting it onto a scoreboard so that I can score right along the edge of that background. Now I'm gonna show you another way to do this in a moment. This is just one way. So you'll see I'm just gonna score right along the edge of that panel. I then can flip it over and score on the other side if you really wanna make sure that hinge works, but it's not necessary. All right, so I will fold along those score lines so that I will have these two pieces that will wrap around our card panel. So let's remove that, reinforce the score lines or the fold lines with a bone folder. Then I will put liquid adhesive on these flaps to add it to my card background. Now you could use strong double-sided tape here, but I definitely would use either a strong liquid or strong tape adhesive. And notice that the bottom of the flower lines up with the bottom of my card panel. That will help to ensure it can stand up. So I'm putting the adhesive on that flap, then I will line this up on the front of our card panel, and then press those uh, little flaps onto the back of the card panel. And again, notice that bottom tip, that bottom petal, is lined up with the bottom of the card panel. That way I can be sure it will stand up. I will also put adhesive on the front of that die cut. So that die cut is only att attached to our background by those flaps that wrap around, but I'm putting adhesive on the front of it so that I can lay our inked flower die cut on top of it and I'll line it up. That way I will have a nice strong card front. It won't be flimsy because it is doubled up. Then I will take another panel that's the same size as our background, four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and I will glue that to the back. That is just so those petals that are wrapped around the flaps is sandwiched between our card front and our card back. So the only way this card opens is that flower that flips over. So you can see I'm just kind of doubling that up back there so the flaps are sandwiched together and it looks nice from the back. While that dries for a bit, let's do another. I'm holding one of our card panel backgrounds with the flower up against it. So just holding it there. Before I used a scoreboard to score that line along the edge, this time I traced it with a pencil, then brought that over to my scoreboard and scored along the pencil line. So whichever is easier for you, it really doesn't matter. I actually think this might be easier because I can get a closer score line when I do this, totally up to you. So now we have a white die cut with those little flaps. We'll put glue on those flaps and wrap it around one of our other card panel backgrounds in the same way we did before. So this technique shows you you can use a large die cut to create a shaped card front. I always like to make sure the bottom of the die cut lines up with the bottom of our card panel. That way we know that our card will be able to stand up. Now I'm gonna cut off that excess that's hanging off on the left-hand side. You could leave it there and use a bigger envelope, but I decided to trim it off so I could use a regular size envelope. Now for these second two cards, I did trim my background down a little bit, so it's a little less than four and a quarter by five and a half inches. The panel that I'm gluing to the back of these two cards is four and a quarter by five and a half and it's gold. That way there's a thin strip of gold mat around the card. And I just think it gives it a nice finished look. So this time you've got that little gold trim, but I will also cut off the petals on the left hand side. Next up, we need to choose some sentiments. For one of my cards, I'm using the new Be Merry Sentiment die set. These are layering sentiment dies, and there are hot foil plates that coordinate that are available. But I'm just using the layering dies for Merry Christmas. I use the shadow from white cardstock and the words Merry Christmas from gold. Now I'm also using an older Alex Siberia For Her Sentiment stamp set. I've used this in a video before, I really like it. There are foil plates that coordinate and dies. I use the stamps this time. 
Now, after I did my sentiments, which I'll talk about in a moment, I did create circle die cuts that can get glued to the inside of the card so there is a smooth white spot to write our personal message. Now, this one, I had to trim the side of the circle off a bit so it would fit. I put the adhesive on it and then close the backing onto it and that grabs that circle. Now there's that nice white circle where I can write our personal message. I will just glue a regular circle behind the other two. So now we have three cards using the same stamp set, the same overall design, but changing up the techniques a bit, which is a great way to explore different looks. So let's start with the first one. This has the outline and the stenciling together. I did this sending love with black ink and used the coordinating die to cut it out. This one has the foiled background die. You have a circle in there that gives us a place to write our personal message. Really wish you could see how that foil sparkles in real life. Now for the center of the flower, instead of doing the inking as the stencil offers, I instead layered together a pile of gold gems. I just thought that was a nice touch at the center and I did that for all three cards. And you'll notice that this card stands up nicely for display. All right, now for the second card, which I think might be my favorite of the bunch. This one is the stenciling, but without the outline. I love that soft look. Now on the background of this one, I used that foiled stripe and you can see that little thin gold mat around the edge. I gold heat embossed Sending Love on white cardstock and die cut that out and added it to the flower. Once again, we have that little arrangement of gold pearls right there in the center. And of course, it stands up nicely. Now the third and final one has such a unique look to it and I am so frustrated that the video and photos can't capture it, but it is such a beautiful enamel kind of look to it and it has some texture, it has that shine, it's just really cool, and this features those embossing glazes. Now if you want more contrast between the layers, you could definitely mix the different colors you use, but I really like the soft look. This one has the Merry Christmas die cut, which I did with white and gold cardstock, and the background uses the die that gives that piercing pattern. I did go back and add a gold mat to this one like the others because I really like that finished look. All right, so there you have one card design, one stamp set, and three different techniques. I hope you like this approach. Let me know if you did because I could do more like this to show you how you can use your products differently. Now, if you are interested in what I use, I always link to that below in my description. I also link to the videos I mentioned there. And at the end, I will link to a couple of those videos. Thank you so much for spending all this time with me. I appreciate you and I'll see you soon. Peter. <laughs> You, every time you hear those three beeps, you come, <laughs> don't give me a kiss. Bad girl.